Hey everyone, good morning uh, and happy Thanksgiving. Uh, so today we're gonna do a new segment which is called the Realtor Roundtable. We've done our eight week new agent training or basic agent training they just completed last week and we're gonna start with some uh, fresh topics. Uh, today's topic is gonna be what to do in a highest and best situation and how to get your offer noticed and accepted even when there's offers that are higher than yours. Uh, so first, before we jump into our topic, let me just go ahead and share this to our, our, our other viewers. Give me one moment. So how's everyone's Thanksgiving? Don't be shy. Tell us about what you guys had for dinner. Also, if anyone has any questions that they want answered, this is why we're doing these uh, segments. So that way we can take some live questions and uh, live scenarios or any topics that you guys want to learn about. Just let us know. We'll try to cover it in this segment or on the following segment. Okay, so we're all set. All right, so um, as a new agent, I know it's very frustrating when you're trying to present your offers to people and uh, your offers keep getting rejected. Your client gets burnt out, you get burnt out, and it starts to seem pretty impossible to get somebody a house. The question is, what do you do? What is the best way to get around not losing to another offer? Uh, I know a lot of times these offers, uh, we get beat out by the uh, listing agent, we get beat out by cash offers, but there has to be a way in which your client can win that property and still not overpay. So uh, in my uh, expertise over the years, I've learned to use what's called an escalation clause. Uh, and uh, it's been so popular now that Weikert has even adopted it into um, their uh, list of disclosures and their list of uh, documents. So I'll explain to you what it is. Uh, what uh, escalation clause means is that your client is willing to pay a certain amount for the home above the highest offer but still not up to but up to a certain price so let me give you an example let's just say that the home was listed for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if your client is willing to pay up to three hundred thousand for that house but he doesn't want to overpay if it's not necessary what you guys could do is write on the contract right here in the additional contractual provisions uh, side that the buyer agrees to pay let's say a thousand dollars above the highest offer up to three hundred thousand so that would look something that would look something like this we just write that right in here and then here would go your your max offer so what this means is that if you had an offer on the table if someone had an offer on the table that was two hundred and seventy five thousand that means your client would end up getting this property for 276000 Now, $1,000 was acceptable um, many years ago when I was writing up contracts. Depending on the price of your home, $1,000 may seem kind of like very, very sneaky and underhanded. Now you may want to try 3000 or 5000 because, you know, it's not fair that you're going to beat someone out by just 1000 bucks. I mean, unless the, uh, you know, unless the listing agent doesn't care. But I think that um, if you're going to play this, you're going to go this route and play this game, you might as well give them something that's really worth their while. Uh, not, you know, $50, not $100. A thousand seems a little bit low sometimes unless the property is priced very low. But try, you know, three to 5,000. I think that would really get people's attention. But you're still going to protect your client because you're not going to go past that threshold where they want to be. <clears throat> so 300,000 is definitely the number you want to be. Uh, I'm sorry, um, you want to definitely have that number stated because you don't want it to go crazy. And then your client turns out not to be able to afford it and is not qualified up to that amount. So with that being said, your pre-approval letter now has to match what your highest offer could possibly be. So don't give them a pre-approval letter with 250,000 and then your client is willing to go to 300 because then it's gonna look like your client can't even pay that much. So don't do it. All right, next thing you wanna do <clears throat> when you're preparing this offer, make sure that you fill out the contract completely. 
There's nothing worse than working with an agent that doesn't know how to fill out a contract. So have somebody in your office and look it over before you send it out. If you haven't really uh, filled out that many contracts before, uh, make sure it's signed everywhere it's supposed to be signed. And also make sure you're providing with the uh, contract a copy of your deposit, which is uh, obviously really important. Uh, and if you have uh, multiple offers, make sure that your deposit is more than $1,000. If your client is putting down, even if it's putting down 3.5%, show the whole 3.5% as a first deposit just to show them how serious your clients really are. Um, <clears throat> also let them know that your client is uh, willing to move fast, has nothing to sell, because there's nothing worse than a client that has to wait for their lease to, to expire or for them to sell their house to buy this house. So make sure you waive all these um, uh, sale contingencies um, on this property, on, your, on the home you're making an offer on. That is really important, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, the next thing too is if you're dealing, if you're going to be um, if you're going to be making offers and there's multiple offers on the table and some of them are going to be cash, make sure that your client has been pre-approved and not pre-qualified. You could take the pre-approval process uh, as, uh, so far that the only thing missing from the transaction can literally be the house, the title, and the insurance. So if you guys got yourself the house um, and everything else is underwritten, so, such as the income and the, and the assets, if your client is literally ready to go and all you need is this property, it's almost like buying a, a cash deal. So make if you have your client that well approved, make sure you really specify that. Make sure they really know that your client has nothing else to um, be reviewed on that has anything to do with the personal income or assets. All right. Make sure that they understand it's just a home. As long as the home is uh, has clean title and appraises, the home is going to close. So that will really give you an advantage too over cash offers if the cash offer is lower. Now, uh, the next thing you want to keep in mind as well is that when there's uh, multiple offers, highest and best offers, try to submit your offer at the very end. So towards, I would say, the, if the highest and best is at 5 o'clock, submit your offer at 455 or 458, 459, whatever it is that you need to do, and keep a, a timestamp of your offers. That way you can make sure that, you know, you um, don't give anyone a heads up on what your offer is going to be uh, if you don't end up going with this route of the escalation clause. The reason why is because we do have a very unethical uh, portion of our uh, real estate uh, community that doesn't do the right thing. You know, sometimes they may have their own buyer or they may have a, a friend who's submitting an offer and they're um, going to be waiting to see what the highest offer is so they can be told what it is by the listing agent. So always make sure you wait till like right before the end to submit your offer and, and um, follow up immediately. Make sure they got it. So once you submit that email, follow up with a phone call, a text message. Uh, email, everything, just to make sure, listen, just confirm that you received this offer. You may want to try sending the offer also um, as a fax, if, you know, in, just to, so in, the event, in the event that they say that they never got the email, well, you know, you got an email, um, you can have a read receipt, and then you can have a fax, you can have a confirmation that was sent over. So this will protect you guys and make sure your client is well represented. Now, if you really want to, if you really want to shake things up in what, I used to do when I first got into this business, and this is probably unheard of for many real estate agents, is request that you're able to present your offer in person. Uh, we used to do this. Um, there was a time when the listing agents used to have their client um, make an appointment, the buyer's agent would come over, and we would present the offers in person and sell our client and explain to them why our client is the best fit. Uh, if there is a highest and best situation, Talk to the listing agent. Maybe the listing agent would allow uh, the buyer, the seller to come in one night and then have all the buyer's agents come in and represent their, their clients. Yeah, it's unheard of, but if, listen, you really want to try to stand out for a client and you want to pull out all the stops, see if they'll allow you to do this. Even if it's a one-on-one -on -one and there's no <clears throat> other offers and you feel like your client really wants this home but is not willing to maybe pay the full price that they're asking for because it's overpriced, Try to see if you could do a one-on-one -on -one presentation, and then you can get the buyer to maybe like, uh, the, I'm sorry, the seller to maybe really like you, really like your buyers, and then you guys can probably take it from there and get the offer accepted. Uh, now, <clears throat> I know we do live, you know, in a new age now where nobody has time to meet, so if that's the case, no problem. What you should do in that event is have a uh, professional cameraman record you and your clients uh, presenting your offer. Uh, maybe your clients separately and then, then you separately. That way they can see that they're not only dealing with some very motivated buyers, 
but they're also dealing with a very competent real estate agent. Now, if you're scared to get in front of a camera, the time is now to get over that fear because you, there's nothing worse than having um, a fear of something as, as stupid as a camera because obviously camera's not gonna hurt you. Now you have to do it because you have other people depending on you. So imagine if you got, if you were a listing agent and you received three offers, two of the offers came in with a offer, pre-approval or pre-qualification and a deposit check. Yours came over with fully executed contract with an escalation clause, also with a pre-approval letter, explain, also explaining how far in depth they are with the client's qualification. Uh, and then they also get a video uh, with the buyers uh, telling them why they love the home so much and a little bit about their background. And also a video on you uh, about how, um, you know, how, how competent you are and how long you've been in the business and your qualifications. Now, obviously, there may not be time to film an individual video on each house. So get the buyers to maybe when they first agree to start working with you to film a video in a very generic manner stating why they like the house. They don't have to say, oh, we fell in love with your house at 123 Main Street because they can simply say, you know, we've fallen in love with your house and please consider us for, you know, buying this property. Here's a little bit about us. We have two kids and, you know, we currently rent and we're our lease is expired and we really love the neighborhood. You know, please consider us. We're looking for a home to move into by September, uh, such and such. You know, if there's anything we can do to, to make your deal or make the deal better, please let us know and communicate with our, our agent. You know, something as simple and generic as that, that goes a long, long way. So um, try to do that. If you've never done that before, this will really separate you from other agents. So if you're looking for that high-end buyer, imagine having a high-end buyer that is um, uh, being represented by you. But when you first speak to them, you say, hey, Mr. High-end buyer, I know you can work with anyone you want. And you think that working with the listing agent is your best bet. Well, let me tell you how we work with our buyers. Uh, well, first we do is we do a consultation and during that consultation, we fill out, find out what your needs are and I explain to you how we work and how our process is. And then if you decide to work with us, we're going to film a professional video with you that we're going to use to submit w with all our offers. So each time we submit an offer out, there is going to be a company with this really great video telling you and telling your family on, on buying a home. Now, if they're the type of people who are uncomfortable with uh, getting in front of a camera, you really have to motivate them and push them and let them know, listen, this might be a little uncomfortable for you, but we're talking about your future. We're talking about the biggest investment you'll ever make, and we're talking about getting a good deal. Um, we have very competent uh, camera uh, people here and, and editors. They can make a nervous couple look like they're probably seasoned actors, you know, so just let them know not to be worried and uh, just get a little uncomfortable for once in our life, and they'll make a big difference. So, yeah, so th that's why I'm, I'm, I wanted to make this video today because I know that a lot of people get frustrated they start to think about other industries when it, you know, it's getting tough in real estate, especially in the market that we're in right now, how difficult it is to get an offer accepted. And there's so many people out there looking for the same thing. It's a good idea to start thinking, what can I do to make my offer stand out? Think about this. What about if you delivered your offer in person, right? In a nice cover, you know, with maybe a, a $5 coupon to you know, Dunkin' Donuts for the listing agent, you know, something that is going to make your offer stand out. You know, you just start thinking outside the box. I know our clients deserve it. I know you deserve it. And I know you want to start making some real changes in your income and your lifestyle in this new year coming up. So start thinking like a real motivated um, agent. Think about your first day in real estate, how excited you were, how motivated you were to do anything, whatever it took to get your deals done. You know, you've been in this for a few months and you feel kind of beat up and, you know, you don't know, you know, what you're doing wrong. Just you probably lost that motivation. You probably lost that edge you had when you first got started. So what I suggest is you start thinking like a new agent again, get that motivation up, get your levels of, of, of excitement up, and I start thinking, what can I do today that's going to be different? What can I do today that's going to make me stand out? Once you start becoming more of a buyer's agent, you're going to get a lot of these offers accepted. Then and down the road, these buyers are going to have to sell their house. So in a few years, you're going to have a big influx of listings. So you're now always going to be working with buyers, but I do think that when it does come time for you to work with a good and very qualified buyer, you should be representing that buyer to the highest of your capacity. And <clears throat> believe me, people talk. If you do stuff that stands out and really makes them feel like you're um, uh, above and beyond all the others, that word's going to travel very, very fast. So I think that it's important for you guys to uh, start thinking about how you can work to the best of your capabilities, work with the clients you have now and start to see it. Maybe I have two or three buyers right now that I'm under servicing. Have a new consultation with them. Tell them to come in. 
have them sign your exclusive buyer's agreement and then <clears throat> film that video with them. I think they're going to be so <clears throat> impressed by you coming up with these ideas. They're not going to be going anywhere. Even if they lose the next two or three properties, they're still going to stick with you. So now that there's so many options in the market of agents to work with, you really got to make yourself uh, uh, be attractive and be different. Okay, guys. So <clears throat> if you um, enjoyed this video, uh, please don't forget to share it with anyone who you think might also benefit from it. If you have any topics or any questions that you may want answered uh, on this video or on any further videos that we do in the future, please leave it down below. Uh, next time, I think what we're going to cover is how to have an effective follow-up plan and how to make sure you're not leaving any um, any deals on the table. You know, a lot of agents, they make a lot of prospecting calls and they, they reach out to a lot of potential buyers and sellers, but then there's really no follow-up. There's no execution on following up with those people later on. And I'll tell you right now, the riches is in the follow-up. It's not so much in the first meeting. It's in the follow-up that you're going to do later on. So we're going to talk about that in our next uh, episode of Realtor Roundtable. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, please uh, leave it down below. Uh, and if you haven't done yet, please subscribe to all our channels. We are on Facebook under Culture Estate. We're on Instagram and uh, YouTube as the same thing. So thank you guys, and I appreciate uh, you guys watching today. Have an excellent, excellent weekend, and get some rest before Monday is around the corner. So enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Oh, we have a question. <laughs> So just when I thought I was done, we have Sophie with a question here. So Soph, let's see what you have. Sophie says, uh, stayed home after our event, had leftovers in, in bed watching a movie. Yesterday went to my BFFs for a pernil, turkey, and arroz con gandules. So for those of you who don't know, that's rice and beans in Spanish. Sweet potatoes and mushrooms mac oh my god you eat a lot macaroni salad uh yenitos i don't know what that is maybe you can educate me tostones that's uh plantains ham and we'll be going to my third thanksgiving in pa wow so you're gonna we're gonna have to roll you in here on monday and uh good well thank you guys for watching again and so thank you for telling us what you had for for thanksgiving it doesn't make me feel as bad and i'm sure half uh, half of you guys out there don't feel as bad now so uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.